the big newsletter or news news headlines uh, the last uh, week or so of indexes are at all time highs and everybody it implies everybody should be making big money. Uh, in my August third newsletter, uh, I mentioned that the 3,300 stocks that make up the NASDAQ composite index really are going in two different directions. Only 22% of those stocks have outperformed the index average. Normally, you'd think that it'd be about 50-50 to get an average uh, number, but uh, it's not. And what this means is a very small percentage of stocks are doing great, and the rest of them are really not doing great. They're, they're lagging quite a bit. In fact, more than three quarters are underperforming, 78%. And it, it reminded me this morning in the news, there was a story about Afghanistan and how uh, the Taliban is overrunning 10 different regional capitals. And the regular army there has largely fled. And there's a military analogy that the generals charge into battle, battles leading their armies. And uh, until they turn around and look and realize that they don't have any army left, they're going to keep charging ahead. And it's sort of the same thing with stocks. The leading stocks will get fewer and fewer and fewer until all of a sudden investors realize that the emperor has no clothes or the general has no army. And then they will start to be sold off as well. And uh, so let's take a look at some of the different indexes and things. And you can see what, what this means. We refer to this as a lack of breadth in the market. It's not a broad advance. It's a very narrow advance, which makes it weak. This is the New York Stock Exchange Index, which is about 2,800 stocks. And this goes starts. This chart starts last year, just after the COVID crash, and you can see the uptrend was fairly consistent. If we draw a line across the top of these uh, ridges here, we get a fairly smooth uptrend. But what happened about three months ago is all of a sudden the New York Stock Exchange started to run out of gas. So again, we've got a few stocks that are making headlines but most stocks are not participating in those gains. Here's another way to look at it. Uh, this bottom segment of the chart is the New York Stock Exchange uh, average again, NYSE average. This just goes back to the beginning of this year. And you can see that fairly consistent uptrend. And then it goes like this. And this yellow line up top is a volume indicator. And really it's just an, an eight day average of the number of shares going up, which are these green lines, and the number of shares going down, uh, they subtract one from the other, and it gives me this line. And when we look back at the beginning of the year, when the market was strong, this line was above the zero line a lot of the time. Not all the time, but even here, it was just a little bit above, but it stayed there for more than a month, maybe five or six weeks. If we look to the present time, all of a sudden, We've got, we're spending more of our time below uh, the zero line. And what that tells us is there are more stocks going down than are going up uh, in, in quite a bit in, in this case. So this is another way uh, to look at the momentum within the market or what we call market internals. The S&P 500 stocks are drifting uh, the same way. Only 165 of the 500 uh, were above the index average. That's two thirds of those stocks in the S&P 500 are below average. And uh, if what I like to do is I take the 10 uh, top performing stocks. A year ago, it was the Facebooks and Teslas and Netflix and things. Take those out of the S&P 500, look at the other 490. And that's what this uh, chart is, it goes back to January. And again, you have a fairly smooth uptrend. And then all of a sudden there's a, uh, what we call a, 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 a divergence here where things start to change. And all of a sudden the, the rate of upward movement is very slight, although the indexes are making headlines. This is where you saw those headlines right here the last week or so. Hey, uh, new highs, but it masks this weakness that's really in the markets. So the stock market is uh, getting weaker uh, and we are very aware of that. Uh, in a matter of uh, a day or two, uh, we can change our, our holdings dramatically and, uh, and go from largely invested, and I'll show you that in a minute, uh, to uh, largely out of the market uh, to protect your principal if the market starts to go down. Um, this is the bond market. Uh, we talked about the stock market. This is the bond market, and these different lines represent different segments of the market. The uh, uh, 
red line is tre U.S. Treasury bonds, and it went down dramatically early in this year as interest rates rose. Interest rates uh, have tapered off a little bit. Uh, yellow line is corporate bonds. The green line is international government bonds. And they're really struggling to just get up off the floor here, um, and they just are losing a lot of money. This purple line at the top is what we call junk bonds. And junk bonds have a terrible name, but they're a great investment if you know how to play with them. Um, but they are uh, bonds issued by companies with lower credit ratings. And so they have to offer higher interest rate to offset the risk of a uh, higher risk of default. And um, when we see uh, what we call a divergence here, the, this chart is going down. Uh, all the stock indexes are still going up, even if it's just a, a little bit. Um, when we see this difference in, the, in these indicators, it's usually the junk bond market that turns out to be correct. And this is starting to point down. If you look at the other segments of the bond market, they've done okay over the last couple of months. They're still negative for the year. You have lost money, including uh, if you uh, invest, reinvested your dividends. But this last week has been really hard on them. And if I were to draw a line across the, the bottom of these the troughs here, uh, these tails this last week would have broken that trend. So my guess, this is the beginning of a new trend. It's a little early to tell for sure, uh, but we're watching it very closely. Um, as a result of these uh, things, we're paying a lot of attention to what we call seasonality. And this chart shows the different months of the year and the stock market performance uh, in just post-election years, which we're in right now, uh, over the last 10 years, last 20 years, and since 1950. But when we look down here in August and September, where we are, uh, there's a more rating than any other time of the year. And uh, so these are, this is a seasonally weak time. And that's one of the reasons that we are very ready to jump out of the market, even though we're invested at the moment. Um, actually, I love this time of year because it's followed by October, which is usually the market starting a big uptrend. And I just love to be able to figure out what's working the best and, and buy a whole bunch of it in October uh, and run through November. Current holdings for these are the main uh, strategies that, uh, that we're using. Um, a large percentage of Shadow Ridge money is in these strategies. Uh, you see, we're not quite fully invested uh, in some of them, even future technologies. It's only 84% invested. And that means we're just having trouble finding new things to invest in. And we're not getting too anxious because like I said, we expect the market may uh, roll over and, and start to go down. If it does, it could be going down in a big way. Thank you.